got to do links. Welcome to Lions, Tigers, and Bears, and welcome to our first virtual visit. I'm Bobby Brink, and I'm the founder and director out here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears in Alpine. And for those of you that um, don't know about us and who have never been out here to visit during the virus, we are closed to visitors. So we decided to bring our visits one uh, habitat at a time to you, one day at a time, so we can all get through this. And at Lions, Tigers, and Bears, what we do is we rescue exotic animals as well as domestic animals all around the country. We've um, worked international as well as nationwide. We work with the first responders, state officials, your local sheriffs, uh, private pet owners, a lot of other animal organizations working to do the same thing that we do. We work with them to get animals out of places where they shouldn't be and to a sanctuary. And one of the things I always tell people, if you're gonna support animals and you're gonna support a sanctuary, know your animals. Know where your animal came from. Know it's staying at that sanctuary for life. And, and know when it dies, really important. You wanna know that your animal got to spend their whole life at that, at that sanctuary and live out the rest, you know, the rest of their days in dignity. So that's what we do here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears. And another thing that we, um, always do is we have lots of interns, lots of students, lots of volunteers. So today we're actually going to have one of our interns leading the visit because I'm here with some of my best friends, special friends, Meatball, Sugar, who's peeking out of the culvert up there. Maddie's up on the platform and Blossom's over on the on the hammock area and enjoying a little bit of food. But um, I'm going to turn it over to Jen here and she's actually a volunteer. She's a volunteer out here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears, and she came to us in May of 2019 to uh, complete her college internship. She's uh, currently attending San Diego State University and graduates this May. She's majoring in biology with an emphasis on zoology, and Jess hopes to pursue a career working with exotic animals in the future, and she still enjoys volunteering here at LTB. So here you go, Jen. Hi, everyone. What a beautiful day we're having here out at Lions, Tigers, and Bears. Welcome to those of you who have never visited our sanctuary. This is an awesome opportunity for you to get to visit some of our animals in the comfort of your own home. So how many of you have actually watching have been to Lions, Tigers, and Bears before? Awesome. Well, thank you for also tuning in. It's awesome that you can revisit your time here by watching this video. So let's get started with some bears. So the first bear you saw was Meatball. He is over munching on some watermelon right now. Um, uh, he was actually uh, rescued when he was roaming around a Glendale neighborhood. And he was roaming around in the neighborhood, swimming in their pools, and eating a bunch of the food out of their fridges. Uh, the neighbors did not appreciate that, and so they called the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and they uh, caught him and took him 100 miles away. Well, about a week later, he came back to that same neighborhood. So they caught him up again and took him even farther, but about a month later, he came back to that same neighborhood. Bears are awesome navigators, 
and we'll return to an area where there's food and shelter um, with no competition. The Department of Fish and Wildlife does have a three strike rule. So when an animal visit, visits a populated area three times, unfortunately, it is usually, usually euthanized. Fortunately for Meatball, the neighborhood that he'd been wandering around in, round in loved him despite all the bear hair they had in their pools. And the Department of Fish and Wildlife called Bobby up and Bobby was able to rescue Meatball. The reason his name is Meatball is because one of the times they attempted to catch him, he was actually carrying a bag of meatballs uh, from someone's freezer. Where did the snow go? <laughs> <laughs> the snow melted. It melts pretty fast up here, so they gotta enjoy it for about a day. Our next bear you can see is on that wooden platform. Her name is Maddie. Maddie here was rescued from a uh, owner who first she was bought as a cub for a three-year-old. As you can see, she quickly outgrew her little three-year-old companion and they were gonna sell her for under $200 to a canned hunt ranch. Now a canned hunt ranch is where they buy, uh, breed, and raise wild animals such as bears for hunters to just go uh, right up to and shoot. So they're gonna sell her to one of those ranches. But one of the neighbors actually knew about Maddie and had fallen in love with Maddie. And so they didn't want that future for her. And so they took her in, but could only keep her in a 20 square foot corn crib. Uh, and which is not the right habitat for her. And when Ohio passed uh, an act that made it so they couldn't keep her, they didn't have the resources to keep her anywhere else. So Bobby was able to rescue and take her in um, after that act was passed, which Bobby did help pass in Ohio. Not only did she bring Maddie here to Lions, Tigers, and Bears, she also rehomed a lot of an different animals when that act was passed. Now, as you can see, between Maddie and Meatball, they are black bears, but they have more of a brown red color to them. So not all black bears are black. They are actually, they can actually be red, uh, red color, a brown color, even a blonde color. The way you can tell the difference though, between a black bear and a brown bear, one of the main differences is a hump between their shoulder blades. So grizzly bears will actually have a hump between their shoulder blades while uh, uh, black bears do not. she's eating she's eating a bunch of fruit we put out there for him so a bears uh, a bears bears eat plants berries shrubs ants worms and here at lions tigers and bears we make sure to feed them a variety of protein including fresh eggs from our hens we have here at our sanctuary and nuts and fruits the fruit we actually scatter feed. As you can see, we've placed the fruit all around their habitat. And that's just to help uh, preserve that natural foraging behavior that they would do in the wild. We also give them little treats of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, just as a little extra treat. You can see, hi, this is Liberty going to get 
a PB and J right here. Now Liberty was the first bear Bobby rescued at Lions, Tigers, and Bears. She was rescued in 2009 on July 4th, hence her name Liberty. This whole habitat is actually named after her. It's named Liberty Station. Liberty here was found wandering around a campsite uh, when she was a little less than a year old and she was without her mother. Now, usually when rangers of the Fish Department of Fish and Wildlife find these cubs without their mom wandering around campsites, they do have to usually be euthanized because that cub will not travel any further from the campsite and that's not safe for people either. And so they are usually euthanized, but luckily the agent who rescued Liberty um, from that campsite just couldn't, did not want to euthanize another cub that year. And so he called Bobby up and he actually came out with his children to bring Liberty here to Bobby. So I wonder, what do you think Meatball smells? So he probably smells um, all the fruit we have scattered as well. He can probably hear um, there's someone using a weed whacker. He can probably hear that, wondering where that's coming from. He's just checking out his surroundings. So how much do you guys think that the black bears weigh? So black bears weigh anywhere between 130 and 500 pounds. Meatball bear weighs 408 pounds and he is 16 years old. Maddie, weighs 342 pounds and is 19 years old. So one question we get a lot here are if our bears hibernate. Our bears here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears do not hibernate. Bears in the wild usually hibernate due to lack of food um, and resources, not just because it gets cold, but because of that lack of food. Here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears, we feed them 365 days all year round, and so our bears do not go, in, go into hibernation. Yeah, bears normally live from um, to about 30 years old in captivity, about half that in the wild. Um, and so our bears here, um, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> we have our oldest bears are actually 20, around 27 and 25 years old. Since most of our bears are um, rescued, a lot of them don't have the best history behind them. Like we don't know their actual birthday. And so our vets, what they do is take their best estimate from their teeth and how they look on how old they are. But here at Lions, Tigers and Bears, we wanna make sure that we still celebrate them every year. So what we, what we do is we celebrate their birthday on the day they arrived here at Lions, Tigers and Bears. So it is one cool celebration thing that we do for each animal here. You can't see shaking. So we do have six black bears in this habitat. We have a couple more. One is way up on the hill. Um, if you can 
like look way up there past that tree trunk thing that is sugar bear he just looked at us <laughs> sugar bear was bred specifically to be sold to a canned hunt ranch like i talked about before but the keepers who were taking care of him fell absolutely in love with him he was so personable so happy and they they didn't want to see that for him so one of the keepers actually kidnapped him from that ranch and um kept him for herself but she did not have the proper resources to care for one of these bears and so she um she was able to call bobby up and bobby was able to take sugar bear in sugar bear is our biggest black bear weighing at 442 pounds So I saw a question about do uh, bears still go out and forage during lightning and thunders storms? So we do not um, spread the food around during lightnings and thunderstorms. And that's because we actually have electric fencing to help um, improve our habitats and just make sure the bears stay where they're supposed to. So during lightning and thunderstorms, we actually bring our bears into their bedrooms just to keep them the safest as possible. So we do, like I said before, we scatter feed all their fruit and we will scatter feed all the way up that hill. And that's just to make sure they get their exercise as well. Do they swim in the pool? Do they swim in the pool? Yes, they love swimming in the pool. That's one of Meatball's favorite activity. Um, I just saw him swim in the pool last week, actually, during my visit. Uh, right now it's a little, it's not hot enough, I don't think, for them to go in the pool, but they definitely use that pool. Uh, I, I see the question, is it legal to own a bear? It is not legal in California to own a bear, nor is it smart. Bears are uh, wild creatures that should be kept in the wild. They are dangerous animals, even though they look so cute and cuddly. Uh, one bite can definitely take off my finger and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, they are definitely dangerous and should not be owned. So I see the question, do they fish? So uh, in the wild, it is possible that they do fish. I'm sure some of you have seen the pictures of them catching salmon in their mouth. We provide, we don't put fish, any fish in the pool though. Uh, we do provide fish for them though. We like it when people donate fresh fish or just donate fish in general. Um, it's a really good source of protein for them and they really do enjoy it. So I see the question, do bears get, do males get territorial? Um, so our bears here, actually there is a hierarchy in this habitat with Blossom, one of our oldest bears and the smallest bear being at the top. And so that hierarchy is just pretty much when she wants to get the food, she's gonna get the food um, no matter what. And then it goes, there's a list of them down from there. Miss Blossom. So like I said, this is Blossom. She is our oldest bear. She's in her late 20s. We estimate 32. 20, 32? Yes. She's actually 32. <laughs> huh? So she is one of our oldest bears here. And she is the smallest. Weighing in at 
um, <clears throat> 268 pounds. But like I said, she's at the top of the hierarchy. She is the alpha. Blossom here uh, was rescued along with Delilah, who's in her bedroom right now. But Blossom and Delilah were the last residents at a zoo that had been, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, shut down. Um, but the owner really loved his black bears, Blossom and Delilah, so he kept hold of them. But he couldn't afford to feed him. That's why his, his zoo was shut down, because he didn't have enough funds. So what he would do is he would feed them anything he could. One of, his, one of the things he did feed them was candy from, reject candy from the factory down the street. Now, I don't know about you, but if I ate candy every single day, I would get fat and uh, very malnourished. Well, same for these bears. When Bobby went um, to look at them, they were overweight. They had a lot of dental problems. And so when she brought them here to Lions, Tigers, and Bears, uh, with the help of you guys who donate, uh, and along with Bobby, they were able to get that dental care they needed and be put on a special diet to lose that extra weight. Now they get fed lots of fruits and veggies and proteins and nuts. The sanctuary, we have nine bears. So we have six black bears, one grizzly bear, and two Himalayan bears. All the bears are separated by species in their habitat. So this is purely our six black bears called, and this habitat is called Liberty Station after the first bear that Bobby rescued. So what are the requirements for volunteering? Great question. One of the ways besides donating that you can help at Lions, Tigers, and Bears is to volunteer. What you can do to find out more is go to our website, Lions, Tigers, and Bears, and fill out an a volunteer application. And then you get to come, uh, do a, watch a visit, and then help volunteering. Our volunteers get to do a lot. I'm a volunteer here. I help lead visits. I help make PB&Js. I help clean the chicken pen. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities for volunteers here, and it's a great way to donate your time and enjoy the beautiful sunshine here we have in Alpine. So this habitat here is 3.3 acres. It actually does wrap around. You can kind of see there's like a fenced off area. Um, it wraps around all that cactus. And so they can go behind there. Um, if they don't want to be seen by the public, they can go back there. They also always have access to their bedrooms. So their bedrooms are off to the sides. And this is where we feed each bear. That way each bear can have a specific diet when we feed them their protein. We want to give each bear the specific diet. As you can see, Meatball is way bigger than Blossom here. So we don't want to give them the same amount of food. So we do lock them in their bedrooms when we feed them. And then the cleaners can, and then the keepers can go out and clean their habitat, pick up all the orange peels, pick up all the poop. And then once they're done cleaning the habitat, the keepers go out of it, lock everything up, and the bears have access to it again. So they have access to their bedrooms and the habitat 24 seven, as long as there are no keepers in the habitat. Any questions to all of you kids learning at home? Any questions? How many? Um, do you compost food waste? Uh, we don't come. We do not compost the food waste. Um, we don't know which bears eaten it, so we just want to make sure we clean it up. Have you ever had a bear hug? <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> Kim, ha ha. <laughs> That's funny. We are a no contact facility. So the only bear hug that I have had has from been Meg, our volunteer <laughs> coordinator. Um, but no, we are a no contact facility. So we do not touch the animals. We do not pet them. We let them be bears. Um, do from Claire, do our males ever fight? Our males do not really fight. The males know, all of the bears here know the hierarchy that is our, has been set since they've been rescued and joined this habitat. So no, our bears uh, rarely fight. Uh, so Stephanie, do the bears get toys? Yeah, our bears get toys. As you can see, we have a ball out there. We have some hammocks. We have a picnic table. We have a, looks like a tether ball um, and different things like that. We call that enrichment. Enrichment is anything that improves their day-to-day -day life. And this is just to help them um, for their boredom sometimes, but also it helps if they need, if they have a scratch, they need to itch, they let it scratches. If they wanna play with something, uh, just like you or me would play with a toy, they play with the toys just the same. Yeah, so what kind of meats we feed them, Holly? Are the meat we provide for them includes fish as well as ham and other protein uh, meats that have a lot of protein in them. Chicken and beef. Chicken and beef. Kibble. Hmm? Kibble. Yeah. Do the bears shed? Yes, the bears do shed. So currently they do have their winter coat on them. You can kind of see she, um, the bear in front of us has a little tuft of fur on top of her shoulder that she is shedding. How do we introduce new bears? So the way we introduce new bears is first, uh, they do go into a quarantine, when a new bear is rescued, they do go into quarantine for around six weeks. Six weeks. Um, and that's just to make sure that they are healthy and ready to be introduced to the bears. And then they get put into their own bedroom and where they can meet each bear individually through a fence at first and then once they all the bears have met through the uh through with a fence dividing them then they can get introduced one by one out into the habitat until the new bear has been introduced face to face to all the bears and then they can um be released into this habitat with all the other bears and enjoy the habitat with the other bears as well So the way we call them into their bedrooms, we actually use a bell. It's called the Liberty Bell. And they do know the sound of it. And what it means is that their dinner has, or breakfast has been placed in their bedrooms and that they should come down to get their food. We also, if one is really being stubborn and is like, no, I'm kind of lazy, we call their name. We try to entice them with nice PB&Js. Uh, and that's how we get them into their bedrooms. They each do have their own bedroom that they have decided is theirs. So we have... Oh. Carter H5 asks, do they eat, ever eat honey? What do you guys think? Do you guys think they eat honey like they show in TV shows? Yeah, as a special treat, uh, we can provide them honey. Sometimes we like to make honey uh, sandwiches for them, but that's only usually on special occasions. So you can see the boys' bed right now. <laughs> you can see Sugar Bear climbing up the hill with actually a piece of lettuce, it looks like, in his mouth. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> you heard him. 
Uh, so you can actually see the boys' bedrooms. That's Meatball and Sugar Bear's bedrooms right there. Uh, along with their bedrooms, there are also transfer cages <laughs> attached uh, to their bedrooms. Transfer cages are what we use when we need to move the animal um, up to their surgery room or if there needs to be a vet check, a non-invasive vet check, like if, we just, if the vet just needs to look at his nose or their ears without touching them, we're able to move them into those transfer cages um, so we can get a closer look at them, but still without touching them. Which one is your favorite animal? Is that a question for me? Mm -hmm. Which one is my favorite animal? Oh my gosh, that's who, that's so hard, guys. Um, for the bears, I do love Meatball. Meatball is one of my favorites. Uh, but my favorite animal here at the sanctuary would have to be one of our tigers named Nola. She has my heart. What's your, what's your guys' favorite animals? So we did have a question about spaying and neutering. So we do neuter our males here. So our males are neutered. Our females are uh, fully intact. And that's just because spaying is a more invasive procedure and telling a bear not to climb for a month is really, really hard. But we do neuter all of our males here at Lions, Tigers, and Bears, except for the lions. But I'll leave that uh, why we don't neuter our lions for when we do the virtual tour on the lions. So you'll have to tune back in for that. So this is Liberty again. She's wondering if we have some more PB and J's with us. <laughs> There's also almonds sprinkled in the grass. So you can see her sniffing out, foraging for those almonds that our keepers have sprinkled in the grass. even though we are not open due to the virus and um, you can't come help support us by coming to help visit uh, these wonderful animals, there are other ways you can still help us. And that's by uh, helping with our 2020 campaign. Hang in there. The Hang in there 20 campaign. And that's a campaign where we're just asking for a $20 donation but then for you to reach out to your peers and your friends and ask them to also donate $20. Uh, a little goes a long way here. And so you can donate. You can also go on our website to find out how to start your own fundraisers on social media such as Instagram and Facebook. And we actually have all that information on lions, tigers, and bears on our website. And you can find out more how you can help um, spread the word about lions, tigers, and bears and help us hang in there during this tough time. <laughs> so you can see now that she's enjoying the pool, the sun has come out, so it is getting a little warmer here. It's a beautiful day. So she also is probably gonna go bobbing for those apples. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to thank you all for tuning in to our vir virtual visit of the Black Bears today. I want to thank you all of the kids and everyone who uh, asked questions today. That was awesome. 
I hope you keep turning in and keep uh, thinking of the questions you want to ask for future for uh, when Thursday, Friday, Saturday as well. I want to thank you all who are out there supporting us through this tough time. Hi again, everybody. It's Bobby again. And um, how about a great huge applause for Jen? Did she do an awesome job or what? So don't forget, we are having our hang in there. Help us hang in there $20 challenge. And it's super easy if you can help us by donating $20 or more. Or get on our website, www.lionstigersandbears.org. And um, all the animal stories are on there. So if you're at home with your kids, get on the website and you can see the upcoming animals that we'll be doing in our virtual tours. So every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday during this virus at 1030 on Facebook and noon on Instagram. And we hope, we, we hope you can join us. And thanks for helping us and thanks for tuning in. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.